You're listening to True Stories of Air Traffic Control, brought to you by FAA Communications. On March 30th, 75-year-old retired airline pilot Truman O'Brien was flying to his home airport in Vashon, Washington, with his business partner, Craig Bellis. About an hour and a half into their flight, things started to go wrong for the experienced pilots. I feel the first journey, six and five months. I remember just a little bit of a car by you here in the state. Can we get to six thousand? Sure, six six five Fox Trot Lima. No problem at all. Decent and maintain six thousand. I need to find you on the other side. Let me see what I can work out with Senate. Portland Tracon controller Chrissy Lewandowski guided the pilot through the airspace while working other aircraft. We're having a major engine problem here, ma'am. We need to lower and uh, direct to uh, nearest airport. Number six six five Fox Trot Lima. Decent and maintain five thousand seven hundred. That's as close as I can get you for terrain. And uh, do you want to come into Portland International? Or you want to go to Skipus? Lewandowski instructed O'Brien to maintain altitude in the high terrain and gave him vectors to Portland International. Uh, we're going to be very rough engine, ma'am, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to maintain. Number five, Fox Trot Lima, turn rating 220. That'll keep you away from the highest areas of terrain. 220, thank you. And we're not going to be able to maintain altitude, I don't think. November 665, Fox Trot Lima, closest uh, airport I have to you is Goheen. That's a grass field, or we can get you over to uh, Woodland is concrete. It's about uh, one five miles west of you. I'm not sure we're going to make that, ma'am. What's the grass field? Lewandowski offered another grass field, which was now the closest place to attempt a clean landing. As the aircraft descended to 400 feet below the lowest safe altitude in that area of the Cascade Mountains, she issued a low altitude alert and ascertained the amount of fuel remaining and the number of souls on board. Five Fox Trot Lima, what are your flight conditions? Oh, we're just starting to break it up the bottom here, ma'am. The Five Fox Trot Lima, thank you. And uh, low altitude alert again, the uh, safe altitude there's 4,100. The obstruction just up your right side, about a half a mile. And uh, Scott News is at your 11 to 12 o'clock, nine or a mile. Left, the first time we're going to go there. Five Fox Trot Lima, say again. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm clear of terrain here. I've, I've got the terrain in view, but uh, I'm not going to be able to, uh, to get all the way. Lewandowski offered Sutton Airfield again, nine miles to the west, but O'Brien said there was no chance of making it. And five Fox Trot Lima, do you see uh, any roads or anything below you there? Uh, no, ma'am. All we've got are trees. Lots of them. All right, 665 Fox Trot Lima, Roger. Four miles, emitter is 3036. The wind's 25015 at Portland. That was the last transmission between Lewandowski and O'Brien. The aircraft glided into the treetops nose up, then fell to the ground and toppled onto its back. Miraculously alive, but suspended upside down, O'Brien and Bellis unlatched their harnesses and dropped into the wreckage about a foot below. They turned on the airplane's emergency locator transmitter and took it to a clearing on higher ground. They also removed the plane's battery and some wiring from the instrument panel to spark a smoky fire to alert search and rescue. The clock was ticking as night fell in the cold, dark forest. Meanwhile, from the TRACON, Operations Supervisor Patrick Elmore helped a Navy search and rescue unit narrow its search for the aircraft. After six hours deep in the wilderness, O'Brien and Bellis were rescued. You've been listening to True Stories of Air Traffic Control. For a full recount of the story and interviews with the pilot, controller, and operations supervisor, check out our podcast, The Air Up There.